Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. It looks like I've had a problem with my streaming software once again. And I've even updated it and loaded a new version down and it was all working except for the streaming key, which I figured out I didn't have. Um, and I've been messing around with it for the last 15 minutes. I hope you're still with me. And uh, I want to get going on this. I'm going to go over to my computer and tell you what I did with the photographs. We're painting a sunset scene from uh, Grand Teton National Park today. It's on eight and a half by, or 11 by 14 canvas. And uh, I'll uh, be right back. Hang with me. I'm going to go to my computer right now and I'll be right back. Okay, folks, here's my uh, original photo I started with. Beautiful scene, sunset scene from uh, the Grand Tetons. And uh, this one's in portrait format. And I really want to, a, a, uh, I want to do it in landscape portrait with trait. Uh, landscape format which you know I usually use so I have cropped it and made it look like this and so there's the uh, portrait version or the uh, landscape version of the portrait version and I put some uh, grid on it as you can see I normally put a grid on uh, to help me kind of place things in the uh, scene and uh, I also did a value map um, and I'll show you that here um, so it's got some really dark, a couple of dark bands across. It's got a nice reflective mirror look in the uh, in the water. And uh, so I'm going to use that uh, to kind of see if we can do a mirror painting today. So I'm going to go back to my easel now and we'll get started. Okay, so I'm back at my easel now and uh, we're going to get started on this. And I want to uh, show you my palette, show you my uh, brushes and paints. These are my standard Bob Ross set of brushes. I have the two uh, large blending brushes here, the two inch and the one inch. Um, I have a couple of um, fan brushes here, the wide one and the narrow one, the number five and number three, I think they are. I have a couple of these half round brushes here that uh, I use for some of the foliage maybe and some of the trees. Um, I have a little bit of filbert here that I may use on some of the uh, the trees in the background and I have my couple script liners here so that and then along with my fancy painting knife which you've seen before um, and so we'll get going with that. I first want to take you around the palette and tell you what the colors are. The standard Bob Ross palette here is titanium white, phthalo blue, Prussian blue, midnight black, Van Dyke brown, dark sienna, alizarin crimson, sap green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow and bright red and then lastly I have a Grumbacher paint here called ultra violet so uh, that's my paints uh, that's my uh, setup and you see here on my easel I have it set up with the uh, the images above that we're going to use to uh, try to paint from I also have a few marks on my canvas here you can see that slightly they're just sort of the uh, where the grid markings are. <clears throat> I didn't put the full grid on. I don't put the sketch on. Um, I'm just going to use it like this and uh, I'll try to try to get within that um, if we can. I want to put my palette on for you and uh, and put it in the lower right corner now. And uh, so if you're uh, with me here and you got any questions, please uh, Please put them in the chat window and I'll be glad to try to answer them for you. Um, so uh, hopefully uh, we got some folks watching live here today. So I'm going to get my uh, liquid white out, which I always have available. And uh, we're going to put some uh, liquid white on this canvas and, um, and we're going to get going with this thing. So uh, very light coat of liquid white is all you need here. Uh, just enough to kind of make it slick and uh, Make it so the paint that we put on top is going to uh, uh, paint we put on top is going to flow and move around on the canvas, which is what we really want to try to do here. That's really the secret of wet and wet painting is they have some sort of an underlying uh, painting on the canvas, and uh, it allows the next layer of paint to go on very smoothly and get some very nice blends and. Uh, that's sort of the uh, key technique for the Bob Ross painting style, if you've ever watched any of his painting techniques or whatever. Uh, so this is what we got going here. Okay, so... Alright, so that's good enough for that. Alright, so we got, uh, got that going. Um, and... Uh, 
I'm going to start with this sky. The sky, I'm going to leave the white in my brush and I'm going to start trying to work on this sky to get sort of a, uh, a light, some titanium white and get a little bit of uh, dark sienna in there. And uh, I want to get some yellow and some um, yellows, some oranges, some of this Indian yellow. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, get these colors as close as possible to the photograph, I guess. Uh, like right in here, there's some really bright yellow right in here. Uh, and uh, that yellow, it's a combination of uh, cad yellow, Indian yellow, and a little white. Um, it's sort of echoed down here about the same place. Uh, I want to try to see if I can just sort of mimic this uh, mirror action here. Like that, um, as we come up, we're going to get a little more, uh, getting some red in this, getting some orange, maybe a little ochre. Try to change the color just a little bit and uh, kind of spread out here with some of these uh, other colors. Um, as we get over here, let's see, I want to go behind the mountains. I've got at least a little pencil mark where the mountains are on this thing. Uh, same deal down here. Let's sort of copy it and put it down here if we can. Um, sort of gets a little more purple as we go to the other side. Um, a more, it's actually a little more pink actually up there in this corner. And there's some more yellow floating around in there. Okay, um, more white, maybe a little more yellow in some areas in here like that. It's a little yellow and um, maybe even a little of this brown, a little bit of the dark sienna starts floating around in here. And uh, it starts turning, getting some uh, purplish color in there even. Pick up a little violet. I haven't washed my brush out. I'm just putting in what I see here pretty much. Like that. Down here we got similar colors. Very similar browns. Um, so we're painting the sky and we're painting the uh, reflective area in the water here at the same time, uh, which is kind of fun to do. And uh, pick up a little more white maybe, put up here, up there in this area with a little red, get some more pink, pinkish color up here. There we go, something like that. There's a little bit of pink in here. here. This is going to be covered up with some stuff. Um, put some more of this violet in there. Get some more of that going. And um, some really dark colors in here with uh, the violet. It sort of turns gray when I start putting it in here. Um, so we're getting a lot of the sky and a lot of the foreground all covered here at all at the same time. I don't see anybody responding to me. I'm guessing people have not found my live painting channel here. And I don't know why exactly, because my software didn't work the same way as it did last time. So I'm uh, still having trouble with this uh, software from Telestream. I'm not very happy. The thing was working fine for years, and all of a sudden they changed the software, and now it's a big problem. It's a problem with for me anyway. Um, all right, let's see here. Um, put a little more yellow. Get some more of this bright yellow in here if I can. Really want it to be lightened up in this area. Uh, cad yellow and white. And we're gonna just pop it in here like that. Do the same down here. White. 
I keep getting that dark on my brush. I didn't clean out my brush, but we'll get going here with it. Um, that, my cad yellow, like this. Um, yeah, I'll get it nice and bright there if I can, as bright as possible. There we go. I think I'm going to maybe leave it at that. Let me put just a little more this brown, pick up a little more of my dark sienna, and come in here and put in a few more dark clouds that kind of lay in this area right in here. And um, call that done, maybe. <laughs> Keep seeing more colors here that I want to Trying to interject to make sure I have a, enough of that change of color in here. All right, um, I think that's pretty good. All right, um, as long as we got that nice light color there in the back. Aha, I see some folks have tuned in. Well, I'm sorry folks, it's taken me so long to get running here today. I appreciate you being here. Um, my software is still giving me troubles, even though I downloaded a new, brand new version of my broadcast software yesterday and tested it all out. And uh, when I tried to broadcast today, YouTube didn't know I was, who, it, who it was. It took me 15 minutes or more to even find out where my broadcast was going to. Anyway, this is the current one, and we've already started on this painting. It's a uh, beautiful sunset scene from the Grand Tetons National Park. and. Uh, so I wanted to uh, get this background in as fast as possible. I'll put just a few, few light, very light lines across here just to sort of blend it just a little. Um, same with the uh, foreground here. The foreground is all the reflectiveness of the water. So hopefully I've got it sort of mirrored. This is really a, a test of mirroring. And, uh, so I appreciate you guys being here, Carolina, Antonio. Appreciate it. Um, hope some more folks find out, uh, find the uh, the right link here to find me. I don't know why it uh, messed up for me today, but uh, I'm going to try a little more dark. So I want to get make sure we have something going on in that sky that lets you see it. Right now, it's sort of blended away. Don't want it to blend away. I want to have some nice, soft things going on here. Something like that. And similar things going on down here in the water. Um, so that's at least giving us a little bit of a texture change and color change there in that sky. These bristles really make it uh, there we go. All right. So much for that. All right. So there's our sky. I'm going to try to leave that alone. I may come back and put a little bit of more white paint in there around where the sun is. But uh, right now, I'm going to leave that like it is. All right. So let's look at these mountains now. We've got to uh, sort of uh, try to put these mountains in. And then again, this, if you remember my, my last oil painting, I was talking about depth and how the mountains in the distance are smaller than they are up close. So this is another example where the trees sitting in front are uh, actually taller than the mountains that are in the distance. So the mountains now go right about in here somewhere and I'm gonna get this uh, gray, get some midnight black and uh, titanium white and get myself a, a grayish color here that's gonna have some purple in it after a bit but I'm gonna put in just the beginnings of these mountains in the back. If I can see my markings here, they're about right, right in here somewhere. There's a mountain right there. Kind of comes down this way and comes over there. And this this particular mountain in the Grand Tetons has 
it sort of bends a little bit that way to the right. It has a curvature on it that uh, is very noticeable. And people that go there know this is the Grand Tetons because of this mountain's curvature. So you kind of want to make that uh, very important. Give me some more purple here. This is colors are blending in and making a little bit um, color for me. But let's put this. And this next one kind of comes up here and goes like that. Starts so coming down over here and kind of just goes down and kind of disappears behind the uh, trees out there. Um, but it's this this type of point, sort of almost pointed. Uh, top on this particular mountain that tells people you're in the Grand Tetons um, and uh, that that particular look, particularly when the sun is setting, the sun sets to the west of it, um, that particular look is tells you you are looking at these mountains from the east side and uh, the sun is setting in the west. Um, so it's pretty important to try to, when you're trying to capture the image of specific mountain or a type of mountains you want to uh, try to make them look as near as close as you can because people know what the Tetons look like. Uh, this is not a secret mountain somewhere in the middle of nowhere that people don't know what it looks like. Um, so that's my reason and rationale for trying to make sure I get this the right sort of slant on this thing. I'm using a filbert brush here so that it has uh, some nice sort of rounded tops that kind of help me fill in the uh, these mountains here. This mountain is in front of the one behind it. So let's make it a little darker down here. Got some trees in there. This mountain's got some dark on it. Even a little, another little mountain over here. Okay, so that's sort of the mountain range that you see in the Grand Tetons. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you don't live in the U.S., maybe you haven't seen that, or you've maybe seen pictures, but maybe you haven't been there. So I'm trying to bring it to you today as best I can. And uh, all right, so getting some areas here that have uh, more rocky type stuff. It's a lot of snow in here. I'm going to come back and put some of that in and uh, we'll use the knife for that. But I want to get this underlying base on. And while I'm doing that, I should try to mimic that whole thing down here in the water if I can. Um, because it is the type of thing that that we would actually be painting here, picking up all that yellow and it's turning to green, which is not great, but um, I want to try to get these sort of echoed down here in the water. And um, something like this, it kind of comes over like that, kind of curves back in like this. And then goes across and sort of out like this again and back. Okay, and then the others are trees and so forth. Okay, so the, uh, the mirror effect I'm trying to get is uh, trying to paint that in while I'm down here in the water. I might as well put it in and uh, have these. It's not quite the right place, I guess. This needs to come over further and then this is a little further that way and then I've got another little peak down here and you know one going off like that okay so you see now that the water line is like right in here somewhere so we're gonna have this is all gonna be water I'm gonna pull that down and sort of blend that together after a bit um, so um, <clears throat> hopefully that will uh, look right when we get done, but we'll keep working on it until we get done. And uh, so that's that for now. Let's uh, let's get our knife out. <clears throat> I 
Let's see if we can get some snow on these mountains back there. Um, I'm going to take some of my titanium white. It's got I got it mixed up with some yellow. Um, I'm going to take a little of my ultra violet here. Get myself a roll of paint on this knife and see if we can kind of bounce in some snow here on this guy. Wipe that knife off, come back, get a little more clear paint, a little more of the uh, violet, <coughs> and sort of bounce it down here if I can. There's a big set of snow right there. There's another big set of snow coming in there. And uh, takes some practice sometimes, folks, to uh, actually be able to put this paint on like this. Um, you got to let it just touch the canvas ever so lightly and bounce off and uh, let the canvas sort of pull off what it will. And uh, more paint there. All right, so we're making some good progress here. Um, there's some more over here. Down like that. A lot of snow right in here. Okay, over here we've got some more snow in this area. Oh, I picked up way too much violet there. Back and get some white. And we'll just put some right over the top of it. We're here a similar situation. Down here we're going to have something similar. It's going to be sort of same idea in some of this down here. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect down here in the water because it's going to be, uh, I'm going to blend it over anyway and it just has to give me the appearance of, of some snow covered mountains down here that uh, we're reflecting. that up with a little more white paint right here that's probably too much uh, too much there so let's pull it down and make it look more like upside down mountains here all right um, I think I'll let that go for now um, I do want to put some darker color in here in some of these spots among the uh, among the snow so I'm going to see if I can Put a few more dark places here to help pop that snow out. <clears throat> if we, like right here, there's an area that is really kind of dark. So if I can put this ultraviolet and midnight black together in a way that helps me tell you that, that will improve the overall look, I think. It's the, that dark helps make the light pop out. You may have heard me say that before. Um, I'm going to put it in some spots here and um, normally you put the light highlight on last and I may have to come back and put some more on because I may have put too much in here but um, I want it to uh, really show up that we've got some uh, dark in these mountains here in some places. I didn't have any paint on my knife there. Uh, 
All right, that kind of looks the way I want it to look. Um, the top of this mountain here, the main focal point, needs to be just a little more, I think a little more pointed thinking. It's not, uh, something like that maybe. And a uh, few spots down in here. Okay. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it needs to be uh, believable. All right. <clears throat> I'll touch that tip just again here, right here. Needs to look like it's sort of tipped over. All right, all right. I think that kind of says, I kind of says uh, Tetons. All right, so we got a bunch of trees, bunch of green in here, a um, bunch of really dark colors in the in the water. And uh, so I'm going to uh, let's see. I'm going to get my fan brush. I think <clears throat> we're going to start on some of these trees. Uh, we get my big fan brush, I guess, because uh, I want to get a lot of green. And the green is really kind of dark. This uh, sap green I've got with some white in it is uh, way too light. So I'll put a little of my violet in it, put a little of my, maybe a little phthalo blue in it. Phthalo blue will darken it down quite a bit, make it look more, um, more like um, dark evergreen. So let's see what we can do here. Let's start on the left side. Get some really dark. I want to make sure that's dark enough. So like right in here, we've got some trees that are coming down. Let's see, the water line is here. I want to make sure I don't go too far. Need more uh, ochre or something in there. That doesn't have the right color green yet. Maybe I put too much white in it, maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's got a better color. So this tree is like way up here, even above the that. Some dark in there. Okay, it needs to be uh, a little darker because it's, uh, it really is dark back in there in that, uh, in these trees and they're Darker, darker. It gets should get darker, really get darker as it gets down to the ground level. So we we'll either pick up midnight black or ultraviolet or something and sort of pop in here these these colors to get this base <clears throat> that we're painting above. And uh, there's another set of trees like right in here. More ochre, or there are two. Uh, lighten them up just a little. Okay, so I'm just using this big fan brush and trying to make it look as close to these trees as possible. I don't want to like overtake the mountains with it. I want it to uh, come in here and. Uh, just show that the trees are in front of these mountains for sure, right? And uh, 
want to get a base on it. I've got this, I want to make sure I've got some darks right down here at the bottom where this all goes across. Might as well just pop that in right now. So that's my base for those trees. I'm going to be putting some different colors of blue and using Prussian blue. This fan brush is a lot bigger than I need actually. It's a little wider than I thought. I think I'll get my smaller fan brush because it's, it's spread it's coming down too far when I use it. So let's get the other fan brush going. It's smaller. It won't take up as much uh, space when I stipple with it here. Yeah, that's better. Got some some of that gold, yellow gold coming through the back because the sun is setting back there. So these have a start getting more of a yellowish green. Over here, as we move to the right, uh, they have more, more yellow in them. So this is all trees and stuff over here. Give me some more dark blue, some more of my Indian yellow. Prussian blue, Indian yellow gives me a really dark green. So I'm putting these in in the back. They're sort of uh, they're lighter in the back because that sun is hitting on them back there. So let's put those in. I'm going to put this other big tree right over the front of it. Um, and the sun's hitting some of these over here too. I just had too big of a fan brush to try to uh, put them in. Uh, but we're getting, uh, getting a few highlights on them over there. This area here is all sort of... Uh, I've got some green back there that's a lighter green. It's a uh, almost a, a lime green, if you will, back in this area here. It shows there's some uh, some land behind these trees that's a lighter green. I'm going to re restate these trees in the front there. Um, but I want that to be behind it right there. And then as we come down, it actually gets lighter green as we come forward here down to the uh, edge of the water, all the way across here. That goes back like that. <clears throat> Hello, Suzanne. Welcome. Glad you found me. I had so much trouble getting my broadcast started today, I didn't think anybody was going to find me. This is going to come out like this and sort of curve back, something like that. So we're lightening it up, adding some uh, lighter colors, mixing darker colors in uh, over these trees in the back, or these mountains in the back. And uh, the ones I covered up over here, I'll come back with some of my Prussian blue and my sap green and see if I can put those back in here. Something like that. I wanted to connect. I want you to be able to see through them so you can see that land behind them back there. So it looks like there's more depth and more distance in this. Um, so that's what we're doing here with this coming back and restating these trees. There we go. more darks in here. Um, I want to get this big tree in here that uh, sticks above. 
It's about right in here somewhere. the dark on this one I want it to the right because the sun's sort of in the middle here so remember that whenever you start putting in shadows where they should go because it depends on where the sun is in your landscape if you're making doing a landscape um, I want to make sure they they pick up the highlight on the right side and the dark value on the shadow side something like this maybe another couple of trees over here all right then the base I'm going to come back and really hit this again really dark to make sure we have a dark base underneath these trees so they stand out because there's a lot of a lot of shadow, a lot of darkness down here at the bottom, and uh, you want those to reflect that. Otherwise, you're not sure where the grass starts and where the trees start and all of that. So I'm just popping in some really dark bases here, throwing a few more vertical things. So it looks like I have a nice row of trees going back in the distance here. and. Uh, Going back to where this water kind of starts coming out. The water is coming out this way. Okay, um, and along here we've even got some dark along here from the shadow um, of the uh, sunset is uh, kind of, I'll just do that and that sort of helps, helps that. And um, a few flick ups here to uh, make it look like we've got some uh, grasses and things growing along there. Okay. And now this is where we start with some of our water. And I have I have my liquid white on there so it actually has some, some white to uh, to be used. Uh, Okay, glad you guys are able to see me and hear me. Such a frustrating day today. But painting calms me down, and I hope it does you too. This is a good, good thing to uh, do when you're a little stressed and a little frustrated and whatever. Great fun. All right, now I'm going to try to figure out, I think I'm going to go back to my... Um, Filbert brush, see if I can start putting in these really darks. I've got this, all this water that's down here and it's really dark. Um, so I'm going to use my black, midnight black, even use some of this dark brown, get a really dark color here and start putting it in along here. It's picking up the white underneath. You see how it turns? That's the uh, one of the disadvantages of using wet on wet where you put this uh, um, liquid white on the canvas it just right underneath everything and then you have to kind of come back and keep working to keep it dark enough in some cases because it uh, it really gets see how it lightens up as you go that way it just sort of picks up all that white underneath and uh, okay we'll leave it like that I'm gonna pull this down it's not dark enough, not nearly dark enough. There, well, not really dark. It's gonna come, it's gonna be really dark all the way down to the, the bottom here. And, uh, realize you're not able to, uh, see what I'm doing over there on the live broadcast. I'll fix that when I remake the uh, video here. After the broadcast I re-edit the video and put a new version up for you. 
I'm just pulling down now these trees and this, some of this stuff that's making the uh, reflection in the water. And you want these to sort of reflect the trees. Something like this. But it needs to be darker. Still needs to be darker. Picking up my dark browns, all these dark colors I've got. I've got alizarin, I've got midnight black, dark Van Dyke, and all of these. I'm sort of kind of using all of them to get a really dark combination of colors here. You can see the alizarin coming in there a little bit. Uh, so these are uh, trees I want to sort of paint upside down. This big tree, I want him to look like that. I've got all these brush strokes in there, which is not something I like to have, but um, because I'm using this uh, filbert, it's got a rounded top on it. <clears throat> and I think I need more yellows and stuff in there. It's kind of interesting, folks. I can take a lot of those brush strokes out by uh, using my uh, big blender here. After a while, I'll be doing that uh, to uh, get some of those dark brush strokes, or these uh, multiple vertical brush, brush strokes out of here. But I um, just want you to see how dark this has to really be to mimic this reflection. And the vertical brush strokes tell the viewer that this is water. And when I get finished with all of my dark, I'll probably come back and put some more dark in, but I want it to uh, reflect that and kind of blur into those mountains there. Okay, take a look at that and see what we can do with it now with my big, big blender brush. Let's see if we can sort of like that. Back the other way, like that. Like that. Big blender brush just does takes all the work out of making those uh, <clears throat> mirrored images. It just gets rid of all of it because it's just taking. I'm just wiping the brush and dragging it across, and you can see how it. Uh, it's still not as dark as the uh, photograph, <clears throat> but we can continue. We've got plenty of dark colors on our palette left. We can come in here and take these colors and make another layer down here that's even darker and make it sort of mimic the trees and stuff that are up there above it. Like this, a little bit like that. There's a couple more here. So just something like this to kind of blend it together and uh, leave those mountains in the background. The, the uh, reflections of the trees should be a little bit brighter than the mountains just because they're closer. So let's put some of these things in and we'll come back and do another swoop across there and try to uh, blend those in. Um, here I'm going to put a few more. Still is not very dark. I just, it's really hard to get dark, dark, dark after you put this liquid white on your canvas. So it just keeps coming through. Get that um, 
Pile it out of the way there for the live class. There. Okay, dark, dark. Something like that. They have to have some kind of things on them too. Okay. What else? I think this is something like that. All right, let's take our, get our big one inch blending brush, wipe it out, make sure there's nothing in it, as much as you can get out. I'm gonna do this like that again, wipe it out, come back the other way, a little bit lighter touch. One more this way, and one more back the other way. Okay, so we have something that looks like there's a lot of uh, reflection going on in this, and it looks very mirrored-like, which is what I want. Um, I'm going to come back and put a little bit of a dark base around the bottom of this here, so you can see that it's definitely um, the edge of the grass. We've got a a little bit coming back in here somewhere along here. Something like that. It doesn't have to be a perfectly solid line through there. I'm going to put a little few brown spots in here to kind of loosen it up a little bit so that it's not so perfect. It looks like it's almost perfect grass and it's really not. <clears throat> Helps give us a little bit more of that uh, loose feeling. Um, the other thing we can do in here is do the old uh, trick. You've seen Bob Ross do this, I'm sure. It's not even really in the photograph, but it certainly helps helps tell the story of a come on. <laughs> you have to get it right on the end of the, the knife. If you're going to use a knife for this, you have to get it right on the Right on the end. It's not so much that roll of paint, but it's what's on the end of this knife is what really comes off. I still don't have enough on there. Something like this. Put a few streaks in there. Helps tell the story a little bit better. Um, Okay, something like that. Uh, down this left-hand corner, we've got some darks down there that I want to uh, sort of fill in. It's uh, it's actually a bunch of, uh, actually it's reflections, but I'm going to change it from reflections to uh, this bank. There's a, there is a lot of uh, grasses and stuff here on this side of the, of this lake, the water area, and uh, I'm just going to sort of uh, throw this stuff in that kind of makes it look more like you're looking over where you've taken the photograph from. And uh, some of these areas here could be a little more distinct, I think, maybe. Um, like that. A few more things in there. I don't know. Um, play around with this for a long time, I suppose, if I wanted to. Um, and <clears throat> I'm going to put in a few flicks of uh, dark, dark green here to sort of uh, tie these corners down so they're not so uh, open. I don't want to put this stuff in here. So it looks like we've got sort of a uh, kind of looking through an opening in the, uh, the water and um, so kind of helps tie that together. What else? I think maybe this I smooth out just a little bit more and put a few things there. I think I'm going to stop before I make it worse. 
Um, whoops. Um, so there's kind of what it looks like. Again, it, if you compare it to the original photo, it, it does look even even now. It still looks a little bit um, too light, but um, let's make this look more like it's a bank here instead of something I added on there like this. And we've got some things back here. We got maybe put in a few vertical uh, brush strokes here in the back to kind of indicate these trees are definitely closer to us. Um, see some things going on there. We can also put in just a few little uh, knife flicks here to uh, sh show there's some other kinds of trees floating around back here. It's not all just green pine trees, so it gives a little more depth as well, a little more interest to it. And uh, I think with that, um, I'm going to sign this little job and say we're done. Right in here. Come on, get some paint into my brush. All right, there we go. All right, I think I'm going to call that finished. And uh, glad you all were able to find me, Chrissy Canvas Art. Oh, thank you for joining. Uh, so I hope this looks like the Tetons uh, looking to the west with the sunset back there and the back in the distance. Um, probably could add just a uh, touch of white even after I sign it. I shouldn't mess around with this too much, but let's a few more light, light white marks back here to sort of give it more white. Um, yeah, it's, it looks on the camera, it looks pretty white, um, but I want it to be looks like the sun's going down back there somewhere, so let's put it here too. And that will, I think, finish it off for me. I'm going to uh, just give it a light touch there, a light touch there. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to stop before I make it any worse. And we'll uh, zoom the camera back and say thank you for, for finding me and staying with me on this uh, live broadcast. Uh, I'm sorry I had so much trouble doing my uh, getting my uh, streaming working again today, but. I'm going to figure that thing out uh, one of these days, and it's going to work just right the next time. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you uh, check out my uh, website, check out my Facebook page. Um, I don't know if I had enough time to play the uh, piano music from Antonio. I try to start the broadcast about 15 minutes early and let you listen to some piano music. Um, you can find him at uh, AntonioRomo.com. He lets me use his uh, piano music for any uh, audio tracks I want. and. Uh, so I'd like to give him credit for that, and uh, I'd like for you to check out his music if you haven't heard him already. So uh, with that said, I'll say uh, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. So long for now. Bye-bye.